What's up everybody, Alex here and welcome to the Dota Underlords Best Builds of the Week, the weekly series where I show you guys top 5 meta builds to help you rank up in Dota Underlords. Now this week, once again, we are starting with the 6 Savage and a Carry build. Now the meta has been pretty stagnant lately, we've not received any balance updates in, well, I can't remember the last one, so well over a month. So what you're starting to see here is very um, standard builds really starting to solidify themselves as top tier. And this is one of them. The six Heartless and a carry. The way this works is you start with six Heartless right on the field. You're going to replace Pangolier. Uh, sorry, you're going to replace Tusk with Pangolier when you can. I do like going a uh, Blade Mail on Pangolier because, play, uh, because Pangolier's ability attracts damage to him. So Blade Mail actually has pretty good return on uh, someone like Pango. You're going to want to look for a... Uh, a neck book for the um, for the bristleback because of how many brill bruisers you're going to be able to pop out of there, and the fact that they get advantage of the savage bonus. Now the core here is that you are going to be getting to seven as quickly as you can. That is to enable you to get the lone druid, but also so that you can three star slark and or specter at levels uh, seven and eight. You're at your sweet spot to get the three star units. The idea here is you level very quickly in this build. You are getting to seven and eight as fast as you can, specifically seven, and you're going to be rolling. To a three star Slark Inspector. I don't care if Slark has a three star ability, you're giving a Mask of Madness that is ideal. You're also going to ensure that you get a good item on Spectre. I like Battle Fury, but also BKB is a great item for Spectre as well. Again, this has been one of those builds that has really solidified itself in the meta, absolute top tier, and one that I'm sure you're going to find success with. And for build number two, it is Human Mages. Guys, I absolutely love human mages with that extra splash of dragon when possible but human mages is one of those builds that like is just so damn fun to play you run the barricades right you get the targeting buddy you can even put a mango tree here uh you know you get rubik with the the, the radiance i still love this combo call me crazy but this is one of my favorite combos the radiance rubik i know it's i know it's i know it's crazy but hey, I'm a little crazy, what can I say? Uh, you know, you can get something like a Refresher Orb on a Keeper of the Light if you can. Uh, if you do not have Keeper of the Light with, uh, you know, Refresher Orb, and you still have Lich in, for instance, you can you can put a Refresher on someone like Lina. Though with the Mana Generation and an Octarine, Lina does absolutely want, uh, absolute wonders. Remember that in this build, you never want to get Mana Regeneration items, you're never getting Void Stone, you're never getting Yule Scepter. The reason for this is because with the six humans, you're generating so much mana so fast anyway. Octarine is top tier in this build. Uh, Refresh Orb is top tier. Like, I would take every Octarine you could possibly take. Um, you know, Kea is a fantastic early item. At the end of the day, it's a fantastic build. One that I have so much fun with, and I'm, one that I'm sure you're going to enjoy as well. There's been a few comments lately, people asking, Alex, I'm new to the game. What kind of build do you recommend just to get started? Just so I can at least have a very easy build, just to start learning the basics of the game. If that's the case, I do recommend going 6 Shaman, for Savage. The reason for this is because A, it's a good build, but B, it helps you to kind of understand the way alliances synergize together, like, you know, your summon units all get the Savage bonus, and of course, you're really amplifying these Savage units running Shaman. Uh, overall, it's a fun build. I do like an Essex in this, the uh, healing uh, support in Essex. The reason for this is because the Golem and the Archer benefit from the Savage bonus. Uh, you know, of course, the Summoners as well. You can actually do a variant of this with uh, with Summoners as well. You can get like a Shadow Shaman and a Lycan, put them in there. Absolutely recommend it as well. You're getting an extra 20% damage on top of all your summons. It is a good build, 100%. I do like this variant as well. It's a little more straightforward. And again, this, this, for this week, I'm trying to focus more on people that are relatively new to the game. Uh, believe it or not, there are still new people coming to Dota Underlords. And if you're new, I recommend this build. The little archer is going to spawn here. Uh, you could even swap these two if you want. Uh, you probably should swap these two so he runs after his cast. And uh, he'll be able to actually get the treants coming out on this way as well. But at the end of the day, a very good build, one that, uh, you know, if you're new to the game, you'll find a lot of success with. And again, you want to put the Necromicon on Bristleback because he activates his cool spray so frequently that you're basically always going to have a Brill Bruiser up. And the Brill, the Brill Bruiser is going to take advantage of the Savage bonus. One of my absolute favorite builds of the meta is Six Assassins. And this is a variant I've been having a lot of fun with. And I've been going, uh, you know, all out attack Eno whenever I can, simply for the added stun. Uh, what I do, or if you can't get him, I would take uh, Enthrall and Essex. Now, what we're doing here is we're taking Alchemist up front to be as tanky as possible. We want Kunkka for the stun. We're getting stuns from Eno. You're going Battle Fury and Ember Spirit, Mask on uh, Phantom Assassin, Mask on Slark. The idea here is this is actually a level build. Now, if you get super good RNG and you can. Uh, uh, roll for a three-star, uh, you know, bounty hunter and uh, 
PA, then of course, do it. Why not, right? But realistically, you'll probably find yourself re-rolling hard for a three-star Slark and even a, an Ember Spirit. Spirits aren't that popular right now, um, you know, and so the result of that is Ember Spirit is often defaulting into just Assassin builds. He's very rarely being used in Spirits. You just see the odd Spirit player here and there, but realistically, Ember Spirit is also a target for three stars, but there is no win condition like a three-star Slark. Absolutely unbelievable. And once you pull TA and Faceless, right, you're, uh, you're going to have an absolutely fantastic time. Now, if you do get to uh, to 9, I would recommend finishing the Void Alliance. Whether you go Spectre or Void, I, you know, it's up to you, Void Spirit. Uh, if you are at 9, I do recommend finishing the Void Alliance if possible. You're 2 off. And of course, right, uh, this, does, this build does require at least level 8. At level 9, you can finish uh, the, the Void Alliance. I do recommend running, uh, you know, uh, you could you could even put in a Queen of Pain as opposed to a Bounty Hunter if you wish. But at the end of the day, this is a really good build, one that I've had success with and one that I have so much fun wrecking in this current meta. And for the final build of the week, we're going to Heartless and 3-star Demons. Guys, this build is one of those builds very similar to the 3-star Savage strategy I featured in the first uh, build of the week. Now, however, this is a little different because what you're doing here is you're getting to 4 Heartless and you're taking very high value units. You're taking Pudge, you're taking Alchemist, and of course you're taking Venge and uh, Death Prophet. Now, these are all excellent units. The only weak link here is Venge. This is a level build. You get to level 7, as I'm showing here. Only 7 units here. And what you're doing is you're targeting the Spectre 3, the Terrorblade 3, and the Lifestealer 3. You could even fall into an Alchemist 3, okay? Great. But Alchemist 3 is not going to carry you the way a Spectre, Terrorblade, or Lifestealer will. So, he's kind of the one that, eh, you don't really need him. You don't really need him at 3. If you get him, you get him, right? The core to this is you get to level 7, much like the Savage build, and then you're hard rolling for these carries. Now, here's the problem. And the benefit. It's very unlikely that all three of these are contested in any given game. Terrorblade is probably the least likely to be contested, because Hunters, I know there's going to be games where you have like 500 players and no one knows why, but generally speaking, hunter, hunter, Hunters <laughs> hunters are generally uncontested right now, and Lifestealer is a part of a lot of the Heartless builds, which are really popular, so he's probably going to be contested, and Spectre of all love Spectre. But for some reason, you might find a chance to really slide into a Spectre 3. Now, I would generally target Terrorblade as like a rule of thumb. Always take every Terrorblade because he's the least likely to be contested in this build. But also you're going to want to try and target Lifestealer and Spectre as well. The core here is once you start 3-starring these 3 units, then you start leveling and adding uh, additional value. You could add a Doom, an Axe, a Spirit Breaker, finish Brutes. Brutes is kind of one of the easiest transitions in this. You end up going 4 Brutes if you get to level 9. Uh, that's what I would suggest anyway with a Doom and uh, an Axe. But uh, realistically, a fantastic build. I show this because it, I'm just showing this because it really illustrates the idea that at level 7, a lot of magic can happen, specifically with the roll odds with tier 3s of Terrible Lifestealer, and Spectre. I hope that this uh, guide helped you. Uh, best of luck this week, and thank you so much to all of my wonderful subscribers. Take care, everyone, and have yourselves an absolutely wonderful day.